Okay, good morning, everybody. And uh, I have the pleasure and honor to, uh, on behalf of the Urban Inter Group from your Parliament, European Parliament, to welcome you very warmly. And this time we have the uh, co organization of our meeting uh, with the um, uh, European Forum for Urban Security. And uh, thank you very much for, for this, uh, this possibility to work with you and to have some information about the, the forum. But before giving the floor to Representative Weifels, I, just, I, I was just trying to understand, as always, the, what is the status of Weifels? And I found in your documents that this is the, this is, this is, is a network, a network who represents the uh, diversity of territories and promotes the exchange of experience with the ecosystem of experts. I think that that's why the title of our today's meeting about multi-level governance is absolutely correct. I mean, because this is the, it's uh, uh, something we have similar because we as Urban Intergroup, we are also cross-party. We are not politically affiliated to one of the political groups, which can limit, of course, the, the, the whole activity. So it's, um, uh, 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 the, this the summary of our meeting will be made by Fabienne Keller. She's uh, uh, from uh, uh, another group that I. She's from Re, the Renew. I mean, the so-called liberal group, and uh, the former mayor of Strasbourg. And, um, and I, it's it's very interesting how you cooperate not only as a network, but you how you cooperate with the uh, the other organization of mayors of cities. Of the um, of the UN habitat, but also how you participate in the partnership in the framework of the urban agenda. I think that this is the, that's why uh, uh, what is really important is the, the way of understanding security. I mean that this is very broad as far as I understand that this is not security very limited to one one aspect, but security in a much much broader much broader sense. So um, I'm just to inform you that if you don't see many of the um, uh, members of the parliament uh, with us, don't worry, Friday is the day. Uh, uh, they, of course, they, they're not, not very often, very often they are just traveling, but we will make the kind of summary and we will, uh, we will give the, uh, to, to our colleagues in the parliament to inform them uh, what, is, what was the subject of our meeting and what are the main main information, main conclusion. So this is our responsibility and we will do it. Okay, so let, let's start our meeting and I have a big pleasure and honor to, uh, to first to, uh, to, to, give, to give the floor to Madame Brigitte Dain, the, uh, uh, which coming from Liège, who, uh, uh, who works in, on the international relations officer to the city of Liège and uh, uh, who will um, uh, present us the EFUS uh, declaration. Uh, Madame uh, Brigitte de Dane, c'est à vous. Thank you. Uh, honorable President of the Urban Intergroup, Mr. Jan Olbricht, Honorable Vice Presidents, dear members, dear participants, First of all, I would like to excuse Mr. Willy de Mayer, Mayor of the City of Liège and President of EFUS, who cannot be with us at this very moment. He deeply regrets. However, he asked me to address the following to you on his behalf. As one of the distinguished partners of the urban intergroup of the European Parliament, EFUS is, is honored to co-organize this web conference with you in, all, in order to highlight the need for a reinforced multi-level governance and present the diverse, mutually reinforcing activities of EFUS that contribute to the enhancement of such a governance, governance structure and cooperation between the different levels. The European Forum for Urban Security that brings together nearly 250 cities and regions from 17 countries is the only European network dedicated to fostering discussion, cooperation and support among local and regional authorities in the field of crime prevention and urban security. Founded in 1987, 
EFUS is recognized for its expertise by national and European institutions as a network that represents the diversity of territories and promotes the exchange of experience between local and regional authorities beyond political affiliations, according to the principle of cities helping cities. In light of these objectives, EFUS se seeks to promote a balanced vision of urban security, combining prevention, sanctions, and social cohesion. As we are in regular and direct exchange with our members and partners, and we aim to react in a flexible and agile manner to the persistent and emerging, emerging urban security related challenges they, we, they face, we elected officials and representatives of the local and regional authorities that are members of the European Forum of Urban Security adopted the Security, Democracy and Cities Declaration on the basis of a consensus established within our network. This declaration is a key political statement that echoes the voice, commitments and requests of our members. In this statement, we highlight the central role of cities in designing and implementing transverse security policies. This political document highlights the central role that cities and regions, whatever their size, country or political color, play in designing and implementing transverse security policies based on a balance between prevention sanction and social cohesion. This central role and their level of resilience when it comes to responding to the different types of crises have particular, particularly accentuated in the light of the COVID-19 crisis management and the environment, environmental challenges we face. Investing in prevention, mobilizing the most adequate and agile tools and partnerships. In order to ensure that security related challenges are dealt with in an agile and flexible manner, local and regional authorities need to invest in prevention. They shall mobilize the best available expertise and technologies, depending on the context and be able to access sustainable financial support. Mayors play a key role in establishing and in establishing partnerships, in making them work and in supporting a transverse coordinated approach. Co-production is key. Our members clearly state and implement in practice that security policies and actions must be co-produced with all the relevant stakeholders in order to design practical and flexible actions that contribute to social cohesion and sustainable development. With respect to the principle of co-producing security, EFUS aims to collaborate in a continued and productive manner with national and European institutions. IFUS plays a key role in promoting and facilitating multi-level collaboration, for example, with you, honorable members of the Urban Intergroup, but equally with the relevant director generals of the European Commission uh, or the European Committee of the Regions. Such exchanges seek to enhance dialogue between the local, regional, and the EU level to inform the European co-legislators about the daily concerns and challenges of the citizens that are best observed and detected at the local level. In order to continue this valuable and crucial work, EFIS members are committed to four elements. Elaborate and implement policies that are sustainable based on evidence in line with society's evolution, adopt an efficient security architecture and organization that is adapted to emerging, emerging needs in terms of protection of both the population and public spaces, 
strengthen local partnerships with all the relevant urban stakeholders in order to foster the co-production of policies, maintain close cooperation and regular exchanges with the European institutions and thus bring the EU closer to its citizens. In order to facilitate the implementation of those above commitments, EFUS member local and regional authorities turn to the European institutions and ask for further support to enhance exchange of experiences and cooperation between the different levels, to foster transverse coordinated approaches at the local level, aimed notably at strengthening the link between security and climate change, which is an emerging challenge and risk, to facilitate cities' direct access to funding, advice and support to enable them to respond to the challenges they face and be more resilient, for operational support for cooperation initiatives, such as the Convention of Mayors on Security, that could be led by the European Forum of, for Urban Security and would foster a regular dialogue among European cities, whatever their size, geographical region and political color, and the European institutions. This agile and flexible mechanism would facilitate the design and implementation of experimental and innovative projects carried out at a local level. The above mentioned covenant would build on the work carried out under the partnership on security in public spaces of the urban agenda of the EU, co-led by EFPUS, the city of Nice and the city of Madrid. For further clar clarifications and to discuss how to co-implement the mentioned actions, we would be more than delighted to participate in dedicated hearings organized by the relevant committees of the European Parliament. I would like to thank you on behalf of the Mayor of Liège and President of EFUS, Mr. Willy de Meyer, de Meyer, for your attention and kindly ask you to support the European Forum for Urban Security in the implementation of the declarations actions that would benefit first and foremost, for, foremost the European citizens. Mr. De Meyer stays at your disposal for any further information and questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. thank you. Thank you, Madam. And uh, <clears throat> what I was listening to, I think it's, uh, it's quite interesting today that uh, um, uh, uh, when we are discussing now in, in the parliament, the, the structural changes of the parliament, the recently there was the idea, uh, which is now more and more popular, to create inside the parliament the, uh, the committee uh, which will deal with security. I mean, security committee, which doesn't exist in the parliament for a moment. So when, what, you are what you are describing, of course, we can find it in different committees which, uh, which uh, uh, work on, in, on different, in different fields. But I think that the security committee, I mean, the, the, the necessity to create this kind of committee is growing. So maybe the arguments coming from your expertise and documents, etc., can be very useful to uh, to give the arguments in the parliament to create this kind of committee in future you know, on security in the broadest sense. You know, not the security, for example, in in the in the framework of of um, uh, external policy or security in just in terms of crime, but in general, I think the. Uh, um, the di different um, uh, uh, risks are, are, are growing, and I think that that's why the, the your expertise is extremely extremely important. And of course, I, I noted that um, your there is a the kind of offer to different committees of the parliament that if there are the hearings which can be linked to your activity, uh, just uh, uh, the offer is to invite your representative to this kind of hearings and to present your expertise. So this, <laughs> this is what I so thank you very much and uh, uh, of course my uh, I have best uh, best wishes to the to the mayor of Liège and um, uh, who cannot be with us and uh, now I would like to give the floor to Madame Elizabeth Johnson 
the executive director of EFUS, uh, uh, which can give us the information about the EFUS activities and initiatives. Yes, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Albright, and thank you. And this is a, a great transition, uh, a, a great opportunity, actually. I'm just going to say a few words, but it's a great opportunity to respond to your comments, which are very, uh, of course, uh, relevant and, and, and speak to the difficulties that we've had, that EFUS has had in the past, I want to say, 30 years or 40 years that EFUS has been existing in finding sometimes the right uh, the right uh, stakeholders uh, across the aisle and 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 in the parliament because as you say there's no secure security proper uh, committee so far but it's also all a question of how you define security and this is why we're very happy to have this opportunity to exchange with the urban intergroup because over the years it has appeared that this is the most relevant uh, intergroup obviously for our topics and I think. If the parliament were to create a security uh, group, I think that's something to be discussed. To, we need to continue the discussion because we wouldn't want it to be disconnected from all the uh, topics that the urban intergroup is also dealing with and that we, at, at least at FUs, believe are very much contributive and very much uh, uh, essential parts of uh, urban security. For over uh, 35 years, so almost 40 years, I think, uh, FUS has been working on these cross-cutting topics linked to urban security. And as um, Madame Dedane explained uh, uh, or just, just a minute ago, we've been working on security understood as a combination of prevention, sanction, social cohesion on topics that are as broad as polarization and radicalization, but also violent extremism, but also security of public spaces, uh, 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 different addictions, uh, gang violence, the impact of new technologies, the impact of gender uh, and, and different polarization issues. So the, um, the, the it, sorry, also the topic that I really wanted to mention also is the topic of different demographics. I know uh, typically we have a working group on aging population, and this is something that doesn't come across as an obvious security issue, but actually is a major one for most of our cities. I know it's also an issue of, um, of interest, a topic of interest for the intergroup. So we have a, a very broad vision of security, not out of principle, but because that is what mayors on a very, very daily basis are confronted with, and that that is what citizens are expecting responses to. So I think one of the uh, the, the importance that I want to stress uh, in, in the, on this point is that we don't want to. Uh, specialize on security by having a very narrow view that would be only radicalization or violent extremism, which is sometimes in some cases in, in recent years has been the approach, for instance, of the European Commission, which we have found uh, a, a bit limitative. So uh, coming back to, uh, to, to uh, our topic, um, we've created many working groups for, for our members, like the one on organized crime, uh, security and nightlife, technologies and innovation, or again, security of specific groups like uh, senior citizens. We're going to, uh, uh, we're starting, for instance, a new group uh, on the impact of climate change and on security policy. And this is very much to the point that you were making also that it, security is an evolving issue and that the issues that mayors have to deal with have to evolve. So our vision is also constantly renewed and evolving under the uh, leadership, of course, of our cities who are soliciting us for more expertise in this or that field. We're also, of course, meant a, a platform first and foremost to facilitate exchanges between among peers. So among elected officials uh, who need to meet together, but also among directors of public safety departments in cities, among different crime prevention and violence prevention and security experts all th throughout the administrations. 
the, the form also has a very concrete role of supporting cities through technical assistance, through uh, cooperation projects at an EU level. So we're helping cities also join in European projects, lead European projects, or uh, benefit as a partner. And then the last uh, maybe uh, activity that we wanted to highlight is the, the one of uh, being a spokesperson for cities, and this is on a political level, of course, but also on a technical level, is sharing this expertise from all of the previous activities that I mentioned, sharing these this expertise with uh, members of the European Commissions, with of course members of national governments in each different city in each different country when appropriate, with uh, also with members of the European Parliament when uh, when it's possible, and this is why it's great to have this for us uh, and important to have this communication channel with you. Uh, of course, the Committee of Regions and different organizations also at an international level who are interested in knowing what is happening uh, in the EU at city level. Next slide, please, Esther. Yes, one of the uh, venues or one of the medium uh, that we used and that we were very happy uh, to invest uh, time and effort in, it was uh, this partnership on security in public spaces, which was one aspect, one uh, topic of the urban agenda for the EU. I think most of you must be familiar with this urban agenda mechanism, which aims to broaden the, the field of uh, stakeholders uh, that are consulted and shared, uh, that are active with the European institutions in determining urban issues. And so it's a good example of the type of mechanisms that we feel are important uh, uh, the, the, the president's, our president's speech mentioned the importance of having this co constant communication channel. This was one communication channel that was led by FU's, the city of Nice uh, and the city of Madrid. Uh, it was one of the 14 thematic partnerships and it had uh, different actions and, uh, and our, uh, my colleague, uh, Sébastien Vienno representing the city of Nice. And my other colleague, Werner von Herl from the city of Michelin will give us more information and can give us a little bit of an insight into how it worked and what we produced collectively. But I did want to highlight uh, before I give them the floor are all of the, those topics that are in our opinion, instrumental to uh, an urban security policy, even if they're not labeled urban security, uh, and that go well beyond the, what some of the EU institutions traditionally label, or what is even what is officially in the urban uh, in the European Union security strategy, which is organized crime, cyber crime, radicalization, et cetera, et cetera. We believe these in, these topics, which are transportation and mobility, housing, all the social aspects of uh, social exclusion, social cohesion, different groups of population to be taken into account, marginalized people, and as well as the environment, we believe these topics are essential to urban security at a local level, which is why we need the involvement of uh, you all who are specialized, who are involved in these topics in urban security. One of the top, one of the tools we'd like to explore as well um, is the uh, the tool of pilot projects that we that the the European Parliament has at its disposal, and we feel like maybe this is one of the good venues uh, to uh, explore this cross these cross cutting aspects of urban security. So maybe we can discuss that when uh, at the second uh, part of this. Um, this morning when we have a sort of a Q&A. So without further ado, we will pass the floor to Sébastien Viano from the city of Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, and uh, thank you to all and to MEP Elbridge for this invitation. Uh, it's an honor to uh, say some words about the work of the city of Nice in the field of security. If I may, I will share my screen as well to show you some slides. Um, I don't know if it works. It doesn't seem to work. <laughs> Sorry. Trying again. Otherwise, I will do without slides. 
Do this work now? Okay, wonderful, thank you. So um, just to, to give you a bit of uh, some pieces of context uh, regarding the involvement of the city of Nice in the field of security. Um, so as you all know, uh, Nice has been hit by uh, many terror attacks uh, since 2016. Uh, it has been a very, very difficult uh, period for us uh, since then. And, um, and from that moment onwards, the, the, the city of Nice had decided to, to dedicate much time to the cooperation at European and international level to promote urban security uh, as a field of um, exchange of expertise, but also as a way to, to lobby uh, the European and also international institutions uh, to promote the question of uh, protection of public spaces as something very key to us in order to get some more support uh, from the EU especially, but also to develop projects in order to uh, foster this kind of bottom-up approaches and concrete needs and capacities uh, that we have identified at, at local level. Um, there has been a, a crucial moment for us uh, that had been the, the, um, the adoption of the Nice Declaration uh, in September 2017, along with EFES, uh, and that actually could draft this declaration. This declaration was uh, very influential. It has been co-signed on more than 60 mayors from Europe and also the Mediterranean. And the topic was the prevention of radicalization and the protection of public spaces. Uh, at that time, the commissioner in terms of security was Julian King and he came to Nice and he gave us a lot of support uh, so that this question become, became actually a, a real topic of action for, for the European uh, Commission. Uh, NISA nice also decided to, to apply to European calls for proposals and especially uh, in the framework of the Internal Security Fund. Uh, before uh, the NISA declaration, there was no opportunity for local and regional authorities to apply to such kind of funding. And because of our common action, the European Commission decided to open a course dedicated to local actors so that we managed to, to draft a project together. So coordinated by NISA, nice, but uh, also in partnership with EFES, with the city of Lier, and also the city of Torino in Italy, and also with uh, more than uh, 10 other European cities uh, at European level. Uh, I will show you the map. And uh, the main aspect of this project is uh, to, to foster new approaches, innovative approaches in the field of protection of public spaces in order to finance um, protection measures and also protection equipments. Um, for different security threats uh, at, uh, at local level. So this project is still ongoing and we will organize the uh, last European week of security in, in the field of this uh, uh, project, in the framework of this project in Liège this year. So it will be an important moment and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the urban intergroup will be invited to the, to the security week. Um, now I'm coming to, to the question of the urban agenda for the partnership uh, security in public spaces. As Elizabeth said, uh, it was a, a comprehensive uh, partnership and it's really the example of good multi-level cooperation that we would like to promote in the field of security. So as Elizabeth said, uh, the coordination was uh, actually uh, uh, given to the city of Nice with the, also uh, the European Forum of Urban Security along with the city of Madrid. But as you see uh, with the um, composition of this partnership, you find cities like Mechelen that will give uh, a speech uh, later on, but also Helsinki, Riga, also the city of, of Lille, also region like um, Region of Toscana, also Brussels capital region, some community of cities like the Union della Romagna Fentina in Italy, uh, and also some member states, uh, not as many member states as I would, would like to have in this uh, kind of adventure, but uh, two member states were present, uh, Hungary and also Croatia. And uh, we had a co collaborative work also with uh, European Commission DGs and a special thank also to DG Home that was really, really supportive along with uh, DG Regio and also DG Connect uh, on this particular uh, question. So our work started in 2019 and we have produced an action plan and we are actually coming to the end of the uh, delivery of our actions, but there are plenty of uh, other actions to be uh, actually followed up. 
So the objective, just to be clear, to work on concrete uh, priorities, for instance, urban planning and design to create safer cities, but also a special focus on the question of technologies for smart, sustainable and secure cities, and also how to manage the security and share public spaces uh, with different actors and uh, different challenges. So to be short, there were six actions that were implemented in the framework of our action plan. The first one was to create a kind of self-assessment tool for cities to test their ability to protect their citizens and their public spaces. Uh, it was not a ranking, but uh, it was more like um, uh, tools and devices that cities could actually um, implement uh, to test their capacities. Second action was how to promote recommendation at your level towards the commission, towards the parliament, towards the council, but also to promote new funding schemes, uh, which are very, very essential to us. Action three was uh, more focused on the question of technologies and also artificial intelligence, for instance, facial recognition that were actually very controversial. Uh, the fourth action was on the development of the capacity building training schemes. The fifth one was on the impact of social cohesion uh, in uh, security at local level. And the last one was on the very concept of security by design, which is a core concept now. And how do you develop guidance for architectural, spatial design, and also planning uh, to better protect public spaces? So just to give you some um, uh, important um, milestones uh, about commission proposals uh, that were directly influenced actually by work and our lobbying activities. Uh, for instance, the first document that really recognizes our work is the EU Security Union Strategy of July 2020, uh, where Commission is really making a reference to our work of the Urban Agenda Partnership. That was a big recognition. Also in the counterterrorism agenda, uh, the question of security by design is very much highlighted, which is very important. Uh, also, the, um, this notion of backbone of urban security, and uh, it's very important to us that cities are really uh, recognized by EU institutions, maybe sometimes more than states, to have a role in the security production. So it's uh, very important to us, and, uh, and also in concept conclusions. So I, I won't be uh, too long and I will be uh, also very happy to answer your questions and also give you more examples of security by design projects. Uh, you see that Brussels is also implementing very good things, uh, Liège as well. Um, in Nice, we have the protection of the Promenade des Anglais where the first terror attack occurred uh, in 2016. And all this, as you see, all the barriers, for instance, and all the requalification and all the refurbishment and et cetera, has been financed by EU funds, so it's very important to make this known um, to, to other cities in Europe. And uh, I'd be very happy to, to exchange ideas and also elements if you, if, uh, if you need. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, it's very interesting that uh, when we look at the uh, different partnerships, the, there is a question, uh, uh, what is the, uh, the follow-up of this? And it was really uh, distributed among the uh, different uh, um, uh, stakeholders, but also the, if it's public and publicly well known, because I think it will be very important for all the cities to, 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 to know what they are the, the actions. What we, uh, we were afraid that before creation, the partnership, that it would be a kind of uh, a very interesting action, and but the follow-up will be um, it will not be very clear in terms of European policies and European funds. So good to know that, for example, in Nice, there are some examples that it had been it is a very very clear link to to this. But I think that um, uh, uh, it will be really interesting because you know among us today you have representative of different. Uh, cities organization also, uh, I see representative of, of Euro cities, for example. So I think it's very important uh, that this um, uh, information concerning the actions, etc., are also transmitted to the cities through different organizations. Because from one side, transmitted to the European parliamentarians, but also to, to the other cities. So I think I would just invite all, all of us to, to, to take it and to, to use it uh, for public. Uh, uh, um, uh, for public use. And uh, second remark for me 
is see is as as you know uh, uh, for me maybe as not as a parliamentarian but as a former former mayor it's uh, uh, the question of security is not only the question of technology and the uh, formal uh, decisions the question is what about the um, the feeling of security of citizens if the if the citizens they feel secure or not very often we have technologically very everything clear and the people the people and then don't feel secure uh, in the country, very often they feel secure without the technologies and the uh, solutions. So I think this is, politically speaking, one of these elements which are extreme, extremely important. Uh, another element is just I would like to, uh, to say also to the former speaker that uh, there is a special dynamic inside the parliament. For example, the pilot project. <coughs> pilot project, if you, if you want to have it, its deadline for this is March. So March is very, very close. And the uh, pilot project, which is not uh, 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 prepared together with the commission, has very, very little chances to be accepted because the, the, uh, someone is preparing the pilot project and next it goes to the commission. The commission is rejecting the pilot project uh, um, because of different reasons. So it's important to have some, some kind of partners inside the commission to prepare the pilot project. So I think it's, if there isn't any idea, so uh, so maybe uh, I, I don't think it will be possible now before March, but maybe to prepare the very well the next 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 time the pilot project. And the, the last uh, element before giving the floor to another speaker is uh, I hope that that the, uh, you, you have also contacted the European Commission concerning the new Bauhaus. The new Bauhaus is not only the question of aesthetics and the, the new model of, of construction, as you know, but in the, in the way of thinking of commission, the new Bauhaus is the question of the new design. And new design without, without the element of security uh, will, will not be very useful. So I, I, I hope and I hope that you have this kind of contact with the European Commission yes, sir, concerning yes. the new Bauhaus. Yes. Mr. Sebastian, can you add something? Yes, uh, thank you so much for the comments. I will just uh, reply to your to your um, valuable uh, remarks um, on the question of the concrete uh, aspects that uh, the partnership actually brought to to us and to local authorities. It's really clear now because we we managed to to get some funding opportunities that are still ongoing. We have very good. I think communication and collaboration with European Commission on this, so that's very actually precious. Uh, one thing that it's very, very important, and I think Parliament should help us also to disseminate this message, is that thanks to our action now in EADF uh, funding, there will be the opportunity to actually finance projects incorporating the notion of security at local level in what we call integrated urban strategies. So uh, it's something that we managed actually to get uh, from the Commission. So for the new programming period starting now with a new EADF course and in every region uh, in Europe, local authorities will be able actually to propose and promote comprehensive projects at local level that will integrate this security dimension. So that's very, very important. We have actually drafted communication elements on this, and I think we could actually disseminate them more to the parliament so that uh, everyone knows that better. Um, re regarding the new Bauhaus, as you correctly said, um, it's a very important uh, opportunity also for uh, security aspects. So uh, as this new initiative actually occurred uh, during the course of the execution of our action plan, we incorporated it. So uh, we had extensive discussion with a GRC on this so that they really take on board this question of security by design in the overall Bauhaus uh, reflection. And uh, we have managed to put on board some uh, design schools at local level with students that work with us and that actually managed to combine um, the notion of beauty, security, sustainability, and we do think that it should actually complete the picture. And maybe to just to conclude um, uh, regarding the pilot projects, uh, I do think that uh, with an FS, and Nice is also vice president of FSUS, we have plenty of ideas and we will be very happy, I think, with Elizabeth to, to propose you some uh, very valuable projects also that parliament actually could, uh, could support. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, and uh, just by, by, by the way, 
not only by the way, I uh, just want to inform you that our colleague from the parliament for another political group who's working especially on Bauhaus, Ross uh, Semper is with us. So I think that he was listening to you. And uh, if you have some, if you want to have some more information about the position of the parliament concerning Bauhaus, you have the contact here. Ross Semper is together with us. And I think he is now the best to communicate on this issue inside the parliament. Excellent. And uh, uh, now I would like to give the word to Werner van Herle, the head of prevention and security department from city of Mehelen. Yes, please, the floor is yours. Can you hear me now? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much and uh, good morning, um, everybody. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to uh, give a small testimony on the, the partnership on the protection of public spaces and um, what, uh, what our experience were as a partner uh, at this election year. My name is Werner van Erle. I work for the city of Mechelen uh, as head of department uh, prevention, urban security. And um, this means that uh, within the, uh, the local administration, administration of the, of the city. Me and my team were responsible for developing, implementing, evaluating crime prevention measures, projects, and so on, and also to build this uh, community-oriented approach um, to promote the quality of life. Um, for those who would not know Mechelen, eh, we are a, a city of 87,000 um, uh, inhabitants. We're the sixth largest city in Flanders. Uh, we're located also in the middle between Antwerp and Brussels. So this makes us part of this one large uh, urban agglomeration in, in, in Belgium. Uh, um, some called it, uh, by the way, um, the acts of evil, because you had this radicalization groups coming from Antwerp, going to Brussels and Mechelen in the middle of it. So um, it's, a, it's a one big uh, urban agglomeration, all the consequences that it brings uh, with it. So Mechelen, we faced a lot of uh, challenges um, the past 20 years concerning urban security. Um, as you might know, at the end of the 1990s, Mechelen was called uh, Chicago at the Dale because we had a very bad image, a very bad reputation when it came to urban security. Um, but nowadays we're considered one of the, the reference cities in Flanders, uh, at least uh, for local governments, um, diversity policy and also security policy. Um, because Mechelen, we really took up an active role as a city, as a local government, um, to tackle this negative image um, and to create um, yeah, real solutions for the crime problems uh, and other social problems. And it's exactly this, this key role, uh, we heard it uh, mentioned by Elizabeth and by uh, uh, Yes and also by, by, by Ruth, um, that's given more and more a central place in uh, the urban agenda, uh, the partnership of protection of public spaces, and in the declaration, uh, the security, democracy and cities declaration that was adopted. So uh, the balance between prevention, enforcement and social cohesion is really crucial crucial to make a real change in a city and to see things um, to see things happen. Um, and just at this point, the urban agenda um, the partnership, uh, it provided a real enormous added value um, for us. Everybody knows that we need to make this current concrete integrative policies but what does that exactly mean um, and what should cities do then and how should we do it in an, in an effective and cost efficient way um, and that's where the partnership looks for answers and uh, not so much in, in dealing with this whole range of concrete security issues like terrorism, radicalization, and so on. Um, but we, we looked into the needs and the conditions, um, the needs for support uh, for cities to take up this key role uh, and to take up this coordination at local level and how we can translate these, these principles into real, uh, real policy. So the, there was a focus, a big focus on um, knowledge exchange, regulation, policy frameworks, 
um, but also on, on funding and multi-level uh, governments, uh, governance, I'm sorry, um, like uh, Sebastian already mentioned. And for the city of Mechelen, the participation was really a unique opportunity as uh, maybe I'm not allowed to say, it, but uh, Mechelen is a small city. Um, don't say it at the, at the city council or the mayor in Mechelen, but we're a small city, at least at European level. Um, so we don't have many, many opportunities to go in direct dialogue with the representatives of the European Commission and to reflect with them on, on the security needs. So um, if you allow me, uh, Sebastian already spoke about the six different actions, um, but I would like not to repeat them, but, but to uh, go through them and see what, uh, what uh, cities can take out of it and what we in Mechelen could uh, take out of it. So um, I said the first action was on this development of a framework and self-assessment tool. So it is very crucial because it's an in instrument that enables local security managers like, like myself, to make a snapshot of, of a local situation, um, not only on security, but also on feelings of insecurity and also on, on how uh, the community well-being, how is this situation? And you, there is a whole set of indicators, a lot of work that has been done. Um, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again, but we can build upon these uh, tools that were uh, provided also the recommendations and the guidebook, in fact, that was made to uh, introduce local and regional policy makers to this wide range of uh, European funding opportunities. Um, as I said, for a smaller uh, mid-scale city, it's not only always very clear and, 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 and transparent how to get funding for ideas. Uh, and the, the, the guidebook uh, that was made by Nice and, and others really helps us to, to do so. Also be part of a network and be able to uh, join with uh, other cities and to create a partnership is very crucial of being part of these, um, these initiatives that have been uh, developed. The action tree also, it, it's, it's on awareness raising because it's very tempting for cities to use technology um, for only pure security needs and to forget about the other um, aspects like privacy, human rights, um, and the, the, the negative consequences it can have to put too much effort and too much faith in uh, technologies like um, CCTV and facial recognition. So you need a balanced uh, discourse about it. And this action really made this uh, awareness uh, happen. On action four, I want to say it's on the, on the capacity building scheme. And that's very, very crucial for cities to take up a uh, coordinating role because most of the time, knowledge exchange is often reduced to a what works debate, uh, projects and tools and, and, um, and, and methods and so on. But the discussion on who makes it work and, and the people behind it and the skills they need and, and, and what they should know and how they should apply, that is often overlooked. Uh, and this is one of the uh, uh, crucial points in the partnership that it's also in the um, in the thing in the um, in the actions um, of course security by design very important and very useful um, because it, it makes this balance between um, physical protection access control target hardening and the, har the harsh uh, techniques uh, of crime prevention but it combines it with citizen participation quality of life uh, and so on so that it's really um, good to have concrete guidelines and concrete uh, examples how to do so um, and learn from others who have done the work before. Maybe on action five, because we had the opportunity as Mechelen to lead this one, I will go to a bit more in detail with, the, with what we have done there. Um, if you allow me, I still have a few minutes, I think. Um, Action five was about the social cohesion and the impact and the importance it has for, for European security. Um, we actually we did two sub actions there. One of the first uh, uh, sub actions was to give local security managers a tool to classify existing security uh, measures on a continuum from repressive actions until social inclusion, uh, quality of life um, actions. And that enables us to, to visualize gaps in this 
integrated local security policy. So it can foster a discussion locally on where to invest on are we really holistic? Are we really integrated uh, in our work? So we, we created a manual for this uh, purpose um, and we tested this manual. Yeah? Not only Mechle tested this manual, but thanks to the, the network of AFUS, we were able to involve uh, Cologne, Leuven, Munich and Madrid to test with us this manual. We did it pro bono, uh, so for nothing, um, but it was really useful because a lot of tools that are created are there in the open, on the internet, uh, in closets, gathering dust, nobody uses them. So it's important that tools that are created are used. So that's why we tested it. Um, we also used a QualiPref tool because once you have mapped all your measures, you, you need to know if your, are, if your measures are creating an impact. And you have this QualiPref method, which is developed by the UCPN, European Crime Prevention Network. Um, also a tool that's there, but nobody knew that tool. So we used it and we tested it to see if it was useful in practice, in day-to-day -day practice in those cities. Um, so the, the findings, we uh, also bundled them in some recommendations, a final recommendation report, which is available, I think, still on the Futurum website, or um, certainly if you are interested, I could uh, send it to you. So that's for the existing policies to map and to see if there are gaps. Uh, a second sub-action that we did is that no matter what we seem to do, some problems um, seem to reoccur and come again over and over again. So we don't seem to be able to solve them. We found a, a very interesting uh, model, a collective impact model, um, which is in Europe fairly unknown. Um, it was also, it was in fact created in an American context eh? and it seemed us very promising to create a new approach to create change in very complex uh, social uh, problems. So we ordered a study um, on how to applicate this collective impact model in a European context um, and how to get started. Now, um, thanks to this uh, study, um, the city of Mechelen, we will now start experimenting with this new model and uh, build some experience with it. Um, we received some funding from the Flemish government uh, in the framework of a urban renewal program for the next four years, and they accepted our proposal and to um, really experiment with this uh, collective impact uh, model um, the next four years uh, now. In so to conclude and looking back on our participation in the, in the partnership, it was really uh, very interesting. It was clear that we had a lot of benefits as a, as a local city uh, there, that we did a lot of um, uh, discussions with colleagues and uh, the awareness that we are not alone as Mechelen in uh, looking for answers. Um, and that there are a lot of European cities who are looking for the same uh, answers and the same facing the same problems that's uh, something that creates a strong bond and it's uh, very worthwhile to have this to be part of this partnership and to be able to um yeah share concerns and needs uh, with everybody so that's a bit of what i wanted to say and i thank you very much for your attention Yes, uh, th th uh, thank you very much, and I think it's a very good example that uh, uh, that uh, what what you, what you said that this uh, kind of common common approach and producing the concrete uh, instruments like the producing the manual and to to share the uh, the experience how it works it's possible or not maybe step by step we are leaving the 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 time of meetings with exchange of PowerPoint presentations. And uh, and to enter into the the time of sharing the experience, and uh, uh, what you said that this awareness of not being alone is, is is absolutely basic. I mean, this is crucial, so that it it allows to 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 check what which ideas are are correct, which are not, which are specific for concrete places, that which which are universal, and how the manual can be used. So thank you uh, really very much. And I would like to give the floor now to Madame Kiriaki Bordak 
Burda coup. And uh, but uh, if anybody wants to take the floor during the debate uh, after this uh, uh, speech, please uh, raise your hand or write it on the uh, chat because uh, it's not very easy to see the the hands. Uh, so if you can just uh, put a sign on the chat, it will be very, very good. So uh, please, Lankriyaki, uh, Vardaku, sorry for pronunciation, it's not very, very easy, you know. Not very easy, although the, the Greek uh, names are uh, hard to, to pronounce. It's Kiriaki, okay, it's Kiriaki. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Member of the European Parliament. Um, Good morning to all, dear uh, participants, uh, colleagues. Um, please allow me to begin by thanking EFUS and Urban Intergroup for the invitation and for the opportunity to be among experts in the field of urban security. It's my pleasure and honor to participate in this exceptional discussion, and I hope to also contribute in this exchange both as a chairwoman of the Local Council for Crime Prevention and as a deputy mayor of Piraeus. So please allow me to begin with briefly introducing Piraeus. Piraeus is the largest seaport in the Mediterranean, the largest passenger port in Europe with significant trade and tourist activities, and one of the most densely populated cities in Greece, which is why the issue of urban security is one of the priorities of the municipal authority. But what are the challenges that Piraeus is facing? First of all, fear of crime. According to a recent local poll, the citizens believe that urban insecurity is in the top three city problems. Sense of degradation, especially in the areas related to the port, low social cohesion, high population density, open spaces cover only 2.12% of the city, weak cross-sectoral collaboration, and law enforcement agencies understaffing, for example, the municipal police is extremely understaffed. The municipality of Piraeus responds to the challenge with the Be Secure, Feel Secure project, financed under the EU's Urban Innovative Actions the initiative. Be Secure, Feel Secure aims to develop tools and strategies to be used both in the physical and cyberspace to reinforce urban security in the city. The uh, proposed BSFS solution consists of three interrelated element, elements. First, governance innovation through the creation of a local council of crime prevention, the LCCP. The council that I have the honor to chair is comprised of urban security stakeholders under the common goal to decide on activities and interventions that increase the city's resilience against crime. Second, an ICT system for collaborative urban risk assessment, the CORIM, comes to enable the assessment of combined physical cyber threats and the visualization of risks and other relevant activities through geospatial mapping to facilitate this decision making. And third, a number of special measures following the approach of CPTD model, crime prevention through environmental design, such as the regeneration of selected abandoned or vandalized public property in order to improve urban security. These environmental interventions are accompanied by social activation strategies, for example, the victim support unit, awareness raising events, training, sports activities to enhance community cohesion and connectivity at the neighborhood level following a participatory crime prevention approach. Recently, I have received my new portfolio as a deputy mayor of public health and social services. So having this dual role, president of the LCCP and uh, deputy mayor, it is a great joy and satisfaction when we implement innovative actions that include modern and combined strategies and policies of approaching um, urban security. The innovation of the Be Secure, Feel Secure solution lies in implementing a holistic governance framework and in strengthening an interlinked network between citizens and city stakeholders. Thus, we envision Piraeus as a city open for collaborations and synergies for the development of solutions and guidelines that could be tailored to other cities' needs, both at the national and European level. 
The implementation of the aforementioned urban security policy strategies brings the ex expected values of the Be Secure for Secure project, which are the improvement of urban security status, especially in the most critical areas of intervention, the increased sense of perceived security across the citizens of Piraeus, the collaboration among the municipality, the local police, and the citizens in terms of urban threat responses, which will be strengthened, as well as the promotion of the citizens' level of trust in local authorities. The adoption, deployment, and proper use of CORIM by the municipality and the citizens, which will hopefully entail the reduction of unreported crime and facilitate the work of the Piraeus police, and the successful implementation is expected to be accompanied by a set of replication guidelines addressed to peer local authorities. This last goal leads us to EFO's role in the BSFS project as the multiplier of the BSFS solution at EU level. The forum plays a critical role in disseminating the BSFS output as an inspiration and good practice provider for other EU cities and initiatives through transferability tools, channels, and synergies. EFUS contributes to Be Secure, Feel Secure by being the project's main transferability channel based on its expertise and network of local and regional authorities. Hence, EFUS offers a great dissemination potential at the EU level. The fact that EFUS is also a partner for our fellow UIA tonight project and co-leads the partnership on security in public spaces facilitates the communication, connectivity, activities, and potential synergies. In fact, the three UIA um, security projects, the BSFS of Piraeus, tonight of Turin, and Surrey of Tampere, got together twice in uh, 2021, and the third meeting is foreseen for next June in Tampere, Finland, with the goal of exploiting and sharing knowledge between the projects and discussing what each city can learn from one another. And of course, I would also like to highlight our cooperation with the prior presented partnership on security in public spaces, where the Be Secure, Be Secure interlinks with all six actions of the partnership. At this point, I'm happy to announce that in March uh, 2022, a micro training session provided by EFS to the members of Piraeus Local Council of Crime Prevention will take place under the action four of the partnership on tools and methods for an integrated and sustainable urban security. The information exchange and feedback with the relevant European institution, uh, such as the European Commission, the European Parliament, the European Committee of the Regions, et cetera, is also of great importance for the sustainability of the Be Secure, Feel Secure project and its results. Some of the first BSFS results can be useful and helpful for peer cities were presented to the representatives of the European Commission during a side event of EFOS Security, Democracy and Cities Conference organized in Nice in October, 2021. This is why the EU support is so important. By benefiting from EU funding, we multiply initiatives and advance urban security. A great opportunity for the Be Secure, Feel Secure project to exchange with the European institutions and to nourish the urban security community was its participation in EFOS Security, Democracy and Cities Conference. The project presented its innovative and unique character in thematic workshops, as well as during a focus session and on an exhibition stand. Furthermore, as mentioned before, a side event took place with fellow Urban Innovative Action Security Projects and with a representative of the European Commission. You see, uh, feedback followed these activities and urged all involved parties. As an elected representative of the city of Piraeus, it was my pleasure to participate in all these nourishing activities and I was very honored to exchange as a speaker with my fellow European colleagues on sustainable urban security and tourism. And of course, I deeply share the conference's declaration that highlights that European cities and regions are at the heart of the design and implementation of security policies based on the balance between prevention, sanction, and social cohesion. The need for EU support when it comes to the elaboration and implementation of local projects that could also be transferred 
and implemented elsewhere was also highlighted during the conference. We need to put an emphasis on the security aspect of urban policies and highlight and it's such exchanges as the EFUS conference or today's discussion strongly encouraged and reinforced the collaboration between the EU and the local level. We are present and ready to put all our efforts in co-production urban security with you. Thank you for your attention and congratulations again for the exceptional organization of today's event. Okay, thank, uh, uh, thank you very much. And I, uh, my first reaction uh, is that uh, uh, I don't know if you are involved in the UN Habitat uh, meeting in Katowice because I think that the, uh, uh, this uh, project Be Safe, Feel Safe uh, uh, seems to be very, very useful for UN Habitat, UN Habitat activity in Katowice. So I think that uh, what I would like to suggest, because they are still on preparing the, 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 the conference uh, in, in Katowice, so I think it can be very useful, especially for the, uh, but it's not only for the European cities, but especially for the cities in Africa and in Asia. I think it's especially important, I think, that uh, to, 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 to draw the attention of security in these cities. Um, uh, I would like now the, uh, to, to give the to floor to uh, uh, my colleague from the parliament, Marcos Trujillo Samper, who wanted to take the floor. I mentioned his name before on Bauhaus. Please, the floor is yours, Marcos. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. Thank you for organizing this important meeting, which uh, I think is uh, a very strategic uh, issue to, to debate because uh, we, we are starting to have some important problems of security all across the European cities. And thank you, of course, for your words uh, relating my work in, in European Bauhaus and relating European Bauhaus. It's uh, been for me a pleasure uh, listen to you uh, on these words. And, and of course, uh, I, I want to, to comment some aspects about the, the things that uh, we have uh, been her, uh, hearing uh, this, this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, during all my life as a professor, a full professor at the University of Urban Planning, I always teach to my, my, my students that uh, the most important thing is uh, having a, a good uh, urban design because a good urban design uh, provides uh, good security on, on cities for our citizens. Uh, and that uh, means and involves uh, public space, quality, uh, quality public space, Space, uh, well dimensioned public space, because uh, sometimes uh, we mm, confuse and we think that we need a lot of public space. And, and uh, for example, in the in the modern movement on, on the 20th century, uh, there was a lot of public space, and this fi finally generated uh, problems of security in some parts of the cities, uh, of which this public space was not uh, well dimensioned and well uh, structured to it because uh, we need a, a, a well structure of the public space. We need uh, also a mixture of uh, different uses on the city. If we, the, this, uh, uh, we, if we split the uses on the city and we make the residential city, the working city, the sports city, all split uh, and all separate from uh, different parts of the city, we will generate uh, spaces of no use uh, uh, along, uh, no using spaces along uh, some parts of the day or of the week that will generate uh, insecurity and with problems of no security. Uh, we also need a social mixer, a social mixer. Uh, we need, uh, we, we cannot uh, plan the city for a different uh, um, a social uh, status. Uh, we have to mix all the status in different uh, neighborhoods. Um, and we have to have well-balanced uh, uh, cities between, uh, between the different uses, uh, all mixes. Uh, we have to have the enough quantities of uh, uh, space and buildings for uh, equipment, social equipment, public equipment, enough uh, sp space and buildings for uh, housing, enough uh, and space and, and, and buildings for working. And this ha has to be very well balanced. And this is the 
the scope, and this is a major uh, issue that the urban planners uh, have to tackle with, because sometimes it's not easy to uh, to, to to have the exact proportion uh, between these uh, these uh, different uses. But if we arrive into a good, uh, a well balanced uh, city, a well uh, structured uh, public space, and well dimensioned and well constructed uh, public space, I am very sure that in the majority of the time we will not have the need to uh, incorporate technologies to surveillance, uh, video cameras, uh, um, and policies, uh, and all these kinds of things, because the city will be more sure. And of course, we have to invest a lot of in education, 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 uh, the, the, the behaviors of the uh, of our citizen. This is uh, very uh, this is very important, and this is on the base of our uh, society. And finally, I want to address the, the the importance of the new project in which we are working uh, for all the European Union for the next years, which is the new European Bauhaus. As, uh, Jan has mentioned before, the new European Bauhaus is not only about uh, sustainability, it's not only about inclusion, which is very important for, um, for the security, but it is also about uh, aesthetic. Uh, but when we call, when we are talking about aesthetic, we are not talking about, oh, is this beauty? Okay, yes, it's also <laughs> because it is beauty, but uh, aesthetic will, be, uh, will mean uh, a good quality of our built environment and uh, and it is resume all that I have mentioned before. If we have a good environment, a good built, uh, built environment, uh, well dimensioned, well proportioned with all the mixes uses in the same city, in the same neighborhoods, with all the mixes uh, social status uh, in, the in the same neighborhood, I am sure that we will have the 90%, uh, at least the 90% of the problems of security solved. And then if they we have the the rest of the 10 percent of the problems we will uh, have to address video cameras uh, policies and uh, other uh, police and other uh, other inst other tools to uh, to implement a, a good security in our cities but I, I encourage you to contact with us with, uh, that we are the report, the main reporter in my office and also Eller, uh, Christian Eller from EPP on, on the other committee, on, on each committee. We are the main reporters of this initiative. We are working now uh, to, to write the first draft of uh, the any report on the European Parliament, and of course we can count on your ideas, on your uh, on your position, on on your point of view. And um, we will be very happy to have a meeting with you if you want. And um, you can. I will. I am going to put my email on the on the chat, and I am at your entire disposition. Thank you. Thank you very much, always for Jan for organizing this this important meeting. Yes, thank you. And uh, 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 you, you have to keep the promises uh, from Marcos to, to, to be here, please. Uh, you have the, uh, 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 please look at the chat and you have some important information there concerning the possibility to contact. And of course, uh, uh, I, I talked about the World Urban Forum in Katowice and I'm very glad that uh, you have contact with, with the World Urban Forum because uh, while being for the former meetings of the forum, I think that this, this element can be extremely, extremely useful for the participants. I, I, when I was in, the, uh, in Quito and I know what, what was important for, the, for these participants there. So I think this kind of activity is important. Elizabeth, you have the cat as beautiful as mine. <laughs> And she, my cat is passionate about urban issues. She's been absent all, all the time, but now that you all are here, she wants to be part of the conversation. She's <laughs> absolutely passionate. So, we'll, we'll, but I will not bring her to Katowice. <laughs> okay. All right. So does anybody wants to take the floor? Because there is not mentioned on the, on the chat, but uh, is any, does anybody want to take the floor? Uh, uh, maybe the former panelists, uh, the, the speakers, they want to comment what they have. Please, the, the, I, the floor is open. Elizabeth. 
I have actually I have a question. Just speaking of Katowice, where uh, my colleague Esther, who everyone should know if you don't know her yet, she's here, and I think most of you have been in contact with her. Esther and I were just uh, talking about it yesterday. We're working on the different submissions. To, because there are a lot of events. Those of you who have been to World Urban Forums before know that it's a huge moment with a lot of urban actors. So it's super important indeed. And we're going to have one event with our new partner, which is the Union of uh, Pol uh, Polish Metropolis, UMP. So that is one event we're going to host. We're going to we're thinking of hosting another event that would be most that would be really effuse led on security and nightlife. How do we manage nighttime? We have a lot of projects that are interested in this and a lot of members who are interested in this. Uh, we're coordinating with the UN Habitat. FUS is very connected to UN Habitat. Um, and we are, there's a global network of safer cities that's hosted within UN Habitat where the European sort of counter, uh, not, not counterpart, where the European representative. So we're also going to coordinate with safer cities to see what type of events. So I was wondering if the urban and how the inter in, uh, your urban intergroup is going to be present at WOOF. And I know the submission date is in about a month. So there's still time to set up anything uh, and coordinate our approaches if necessary. Yeah, this is the, uh, the this is a very good question for different reasons. Why? Because my office in Poland is in Katowice. Uh, so uh, uh, I, from my my office to the uh, place of of the forum, it will be five minutes. But it doesn't mean that I will be present there because for different reasons, <laughs> the, we will see what will, what will happen. Of course, I'm I'm in a very close contact with you and Habitat. And probably um, uh, I will, uh, uh, and me as the intergroup, and I hope the intergroup as a, as a, as a whole, some colleagues will be invited um, uh, to, to Katowice. Uh, for a moment, we don't have any special activity of the intergroup. Um, uh, we're still uh, discussing with the uh, with UN Habitat. Up to, up to now, there is no special activity, but I, I hope that we, as members, uh, <clears throat> we can be involved in some of the some activities. If not, um, if not, uh, of course, I will. Uh, I will be there, uh, being the member from this from this region. But I hope that my colleagues from the Parliament uh, can be also involved. We are working with the UN Habitat on this, but for sure we will meet in Katowice. Uh, uh, but uh, there are also another another uh, political reasons which are important uh, uh, for this kind of activity, which I don't want to develop. Um, uh, you know, situation in my country is not not very clear, and I'm not on the side of of this part, which is in the government. In, in contrary, so if something is officially organized, uh, uh, probably I will not be invited. But I will do my best to be present, and I hope my colleagues will go, go uh, uh, there as well. Yes, does anybody want to do so? We, we will see in Katowice for sure because I think it's, we should be there. As you said, this is the important meeting for the urban, for, and my colleagues from the uh, Union of Metropolis, which I know very well, the, the head I think is now the uh, uh, Mr. Truskolaski and Rafał uh, Czaskowski. Uh, so my, my colleagues are very, very active, and I hope it will be a very good, a very good activity with, with them because they are very active in Poland. Okay. Um, I don't know, uh, Esther. Do you want to take the floor? Because I see that uh, I see the, the your hand, and also I see the hand of Pedro or the whoever. So, uh, Esther, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, President Albrecht. Uh, just to follow up on also the cooperation with the Union of Polish Metropolises, I take the opportunity to mention an upcoming event. Uh, that we are take place in a hybrid mode on the 22nd of February um, in Warsaw, actually in person and of course online for those who are joining from all over the world. Um, it will be a debate organized in the framework of the Conference on the Future of Europe uh, on the topic of prevention and mitigation of hate speech uh, jointly by the local level and uh, by the European level. And we will have the chance to welcome the mayor of Warsaw, the mayor of Dansk, um, the first deputy mayor and the vice president of EFUS, Christian Specht, uh, from the city of Mannheim. And um, the mayor of Budapest will also either send us a video message or join us online. 
and hopefully we will also have someone from the European Parliament uh, to represent the, the institution's voice. So um, the, the agenda is currently being updated, uh, but I will send you already the registration link in the chat if you would like to join us. It will take place from 10 to 11.30 on the 22nd. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, so just, just a very short reaction. So if anybody has the intention to invite someone from us, uh, from the Urban Ninja Group to join, for example, the the, uh, the the meeting, etc. Please let us know. We can do it this way and not on the very very official way. So I think, if we, of course, if we, with pleasure, uh, we can take part in this kind of debate. Especially when I know, of course, my colleagues, and uh, of course, all my, uh, I know also the uh, uh, had contact with the Mayor of Budapest, uh, which is also politically very important persons for different reasons, as you know. <clears throat> so, okay. So now uh, Pedro wanted to take the floor. Yes. Please, close yours. Yes. Uh, your, your microphone is off, your microphone. Oh no, it's okay. That's silly, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, um, good morning. Um, first of all, let me congratulate you, President Obers, for a great session, very informative. I'm calling from POLIS. POLIS is the leading network of uh, European cities and regions committed to transport innovation, specifically to innovations that can make urban mobility uh, more sustainable, safe and equitable. And I would just like to share that uh, one of the topics that we have started working uh, last year and we are advancing well with our members is the issue of uh, preventing and fighting systematic uh, sexual harassment in uh, public transport and in public space. Um, it is a structural problem uh, it is pervasive, uh, it happens all across Europe, and obviously it is one of the biggest barriers to uh, accelerating the shift to sustainable mobility because women, as you know, are that, that tiny minority of the population that just represent 52%. And obviously if they don't feel safe, uh, they will not opt for environments or modes of transport that put them at a higher risk, and they would also discourage their children from doing so. So it's a pervasive problem. It has deep implications for sustainable mobility, obviously, as well for security and well-being. Uh, and just to say that um, if any of the uh, participating MEPs or cities or um, researchers or organizations would like to connect with us to uh, exchange ideas on how we can work together, um, we are more than happy to do so uh, and to um, help share what we've done and obviously to, to learn more and see what more can be done for, uh, to, to fight this uh, problem. Thanks very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And of course, I would like also invite that if you can through chat to, to leave the, the information how the people they contact you. And of course, I think it will be the best way. But does anybody want to, uh, um, uh, I see that there's a, the, the, in the chat we have the information uh, uh, concerning the uh, uh, this debate on the organized uh, with the city of Warsaw in the Conference of Future of Europe. Okay, so this is the, what we have. Anybody wants to take the floor from the speakers? If not, uh, uh, we have uh, to, with us, uh, of course, our vice president of the intergroup, uh, Fabian Keller. Uh, Fabian Keller, now, uh, Fabian, if you allow me, I would just say, uh, 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 it's, it's important that uh, Fabian is, 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 is the former mayor of Strasbourg, but also the minister next. But what is important, uh, uh, really, really interested in this functioning of the the uh, Quartier Difficile uh, in France, so I think, which is, I think, for the problem of security, extremely important. So I just want to, Fabienne, not only to make the, uh, the symbolic re resume uh, or summary, but to, to share your, your views with us as uh, your, your experience and uh, how important like, the question of security, especially in the um, Quartier Difficile is. Fabienne Keller, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you so much. Sorry, uh, I joined uh, a little later than the beginning of the, the meeting and, and thank you for the, the, the share of experience and convictions on this question of security. Uh, may I share the fact, uh, thank you, Jan, you recall that I was mayor of Strasbourg. Uh, and in Strasbourg, we have uh, the honor of wel to welcome the European Parliament, but we have also some four important, difficult quarters. Uh, 
like I think in many of our big cities in, in Europe, uh, sometimes in the small cities as well, where there are several problems that are um, uh, um, very difficult. And the more so, uh, security is usually a essential issue. So security is like a, you know, something we have to improve first because uh, beef, when you have no security, you cannot develop education projects, culture, sports. When the girl cannot go back home at night in winter from her basketball uh, uh, session, then no, no way you can develop sports uh, for, for young girls. So security is like a prerequisite uh, and has many aspects. So I really appreciated the, the intervention of Marcos uh, Sempere, our colleague, talking about the way we organize our cities. The, the mixture of activities is of course a very good uh, uh, way to ensure uh, security. N nothing is better than people crossing each other, uh, having, uh, you know, um, attention, giving attention to each other, having shops in so people, lively situations. Uh, but in some places where difficult uh, situations or bad habits or even traffics or, you know, specific places, then I feel the tools like cameras can be very effective. Uh, I think where you have talked about uh, Nice uh, at the beginning, I wasn't there, but uh, developing more to, tools against terrorism. It can be useful, but it's also useful to make, put people together, knowing about what's going on in the quarter of the city you are talking about. Um, uh, people's involvement, teachers, educators, um, uh, policemen, uh, uh, people having uh, Activities like small uh, companies or, or shops uh, can have uh, useful information, social workers can have useful information about what's going on and what type of uh, uh, answers we, we could uh, give to that. So uh, I thank you so much, Jan, to have organized this, uh, uh, this meeting, to have a, a sharing of our experience and improve. I don't believe in the totally controlled society, uh, Chinese type, where everybody is followed for all its movement. So uh, security, of course, is ensured, by, but freedom is not anymore there. Um, in Europe, we are looking for a more, much more balanced uh, uh, solution. And may I say, uh, from my heart, personal uh, uh, involvement, you just talked about it, the, the person who took the floor just before me, it's about security for women. Um, uh, security for women in public spaces, and you can include tran public transportation systems as public space. Uh, as you may know, uh, you have more women than men in public transports, because usually in the family when there is only a car, it's more than one out of two times the man who takes it. So uh, it's, I think it's some of a specific question. Uh, we learned about in the past two years after the Me Too scandal, but also more discussions about security of women, uh, the harassment of, of women. The uh, situations of harassment are very frequent in the, uh, in the public transports. So uh, working against that, and here again, uh, tools can be efficient. In, in, in Strasbourg, for example, I put cameras in all the trams. It's useful uh, instantaneously in case of violence, but this is rare, but it's a very good uh, proof in case of a justice case of an harassment against a woman, for example, when you have the picture, we, I had installed a very positive cooperation between the city, the police, and the tribunal. And then it's accepted by the judge as a proof. And it helps a lot stopping the person doing it. And if you 
in a city, you know, they know what is uh, can be followed by a, a legal case and uh, have the guy punished as much as he as he deserves. So um, I think there is a variety of tool, but we we should not be afraid about talking about security because for me, security for everyone and for the weakest of us is the first uh, freedom. So thank you so much to exchange our experience and to try to build solution, including all, all the tools and urbanism is, is one of the main tools that can be used. So I'm very glad to participate and to thank you, Jan, to have me given to me the opportunity to, to share my experience. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, let's make the, uh, the kind of uh, conclusions uh, we brought to the first. The, uh, we, we take a note from your activity and your project uh, will distribute it to, to the members of the parliament to let them know what is going on. Secondly, that um, uh, you that you declare to participate in any of the hearings which are which can be organized in the parliament, and of course, the, uh, to cooperate with the colleagues who are working on this method. I think the declaration of Marcos Rosempere is 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 very very useful, and of course the um, and uh, and the necessity and the and the will from our side that if you need uh, us to any uh, uh, activities like, for example, Katowice, I think it will be very, very interesting to, to join. And um, uh, as, as you can imagine, because today you have the experience of three three different political groups, Ross is from socialists, Fabien is from liberals, me, I'm from the from the EPP. Uh, so we are a kind of, as you said, we, can, we, we, we are a kind of channel, a channel to, to, to the colleagues. And of course, the, the real advantage of the intergroup urban is, is not the question of the um, network of members of the parliament only, but the real advantage of the money is, is that we, are, we have the network of different actors um, uh, uh, which are working on urban issues. And in fact, uh, we as urban, we can be very, uh, we can be helpful to organize the platform of exchange of information, etc. And my not uh, very pol polite remark about PowerPoint is you, you, I think you understand it very well, but I said exchange of PowerPoint presentation is that we don't need exchange of promotions. Uh, of course, we need, we need a PowerPoint presentation, but we need it as exchange of experience, good experience and bad experience, and to learn from each other and to, to create the new tools. So that's why I think this, this is very interesting, a very interesting uh, meeting today because it was a, 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 a lot of information where, uh, we have and what, 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 you, are, what you are doing, uh, what, how it can, be, it can be used. And my impression from the beginning that it's not only uh, technologically and from the legal point of view uh, safety, but also the feel safe is, is as important as, as to be safe. And I think it's very glad that uh, from different uh, uh, remarks you made, it was very clear. So thank you very much. Let's see if, um, in person uh, during the different meetings, I hope, and let's see in Katowice with some of you and have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.